Hi and hello everyone, it's your pal Berg787 back with a brand new Let's Play series and yes we are going to be playing as the Great Green Prophet himself, Wurzag and the Bloody Hands. Um, Wurzag is pretty awesome, it's pretty cool, he's much better now since the Greenskin um, patch that added Grom the Paunch, they, he had a little bit of a rework um, which was much needed, to say the least. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into the game. Uh, but the Bloody Hands themselves as a faction, what do they get? Well, uninhabitable climate frozen. Makes sense since they barely wear any clothes. They'll be pretty cold. Suitable climates, jungle and desert. Oh, exciting. Uh, Wa has a chance to contain savage orcs in all armies. Whatever, who cares. Uh, enemy hero action success chance minus 50%. And a charge bonus of 25 for all savage orc units. Uh, pretty good considering his army is going to be a bit of a shock army so on point of contact you want as much um, impact so to speak as possible so that's pretty handy. Uh, his lord effects 15% physical resistance for savage orc units. Awesome they need it since they are pretty much butt naked. Uh, he also has an upkeep reduction of 50% for savage orc units, a recruitment cost of minus 50% for savage orc units which means you can almost recruit them for free once you get a couple of other buffs and he has his ability Wurzag's War, which replaces the War. Starts off with a unit of Savage Orcs, well, more than one, but anyway. Uh, some Arrow Boys and a Giant. Uh, that Giant is pretty handy uh, because, well, he counts as a Siege Attacker, and you need that <laughs> since you are a Rush Army. You don't want to be having um, Siege Equipment in your army because it will just lag behind and you want to engage, so having a giant's pretty handy. Um, I don't think there's much else really to say. Legendary, battle difficulty, very hard. We're going to turn Chaos Invasion off for this campaign, and uh, let's get the show on the road. Green gods have led you to Ekrem. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, how they play Savage Orc. Wurzag may recruit his powerful Savage Orc brethren anywhere on the campaign map. Well, it's not exactly true. He has to build a building to be able to do that. So, but you know, yeah, you can build that building anywhere. I think that's basically what they're trying to say. Uh, as an orc, we get war. As a war is an unstoppable force that can be unleashed once your faction uh, gains sufficient reputation. Uh, through winning battles and raising settlements, once a call to war, uh, once a call to war is targeted against an enemy, um, additional mobs will flock to your army for a period of time. Um, it's much better than what it was. It's still not perfect. It's annoying that when you do get this other army that attaches to your army, it basically slows your movement down. It's like completely stupid. I don't know why it does that. Um, if anything, you should move quicker. Well, that's what I think, but I mean, at least you shouldn't be you shouldn't suffer movement penalties for that. That's for sure. Um, anyway, um, you select a target, raising the enemy's capital within the allotted time, or occupying it. When the war ends, will grant you a trophy and a reward in addition to building uh, momentum towards the next call to war. Uh, scrap. You can upgrade stuff. The more you fight, the more you get scrap. You can upgrade your units using scrap, uh, and the underway is like various different races you can use the underways to move about. Alright, let's first start off uh, looking at World's Egg. So as we said, the Great Green Prophet, that's what he starts off with. We know about that. Um, all of the stuff we've discussed. He does start with physical resistance of 25, which is pretty nice. Uh, resilience. Right, it means you attrition of desert and barren wasteland. Pretty cool. Uh, encourage. Hide in forest. Does have frenzy? I think all savage orcs have frenzy. I might be wrong. Um, he has Wurzag's war paint, which uh, imbues an extra 6% physical resistance for everyone within 40 meters. Pretty good. Wurzag's revenge. 
100% miscast chance map wide, whatever. Uh, it starts off with the gaze of Mork, magic missile, uh, brain burster as well. And he has the effigy of the git, which is a bound spell to use against single entities. All nice and good. Uh, his skills. Let's start off with his quest items. So first off, the Baleful Mask. It's a pretty good, pretty good unit. Gives you four bound uh, uses of Vindictive Glare, which whatever, but it's a bound spell, so always quite nice. Um, also does come with melee defense plus eight and minus ten percent upkeep for all units, as well as reducing that enemy hero success chance by another further twenty percent. He himself. Um, well, however, his faction starts with 50, so enemy heroes aren't going to be doing an awful lot to you once you get Baleful Mask. He also has the Squiggly Beast. Gives him an extra 5% physical resistance. Increases the hero uh, the capacity for shamans, as well as the recruitment rank by 5. Capacity by 1, recruitment rank by 5. Untainted, as well, plus 5 in the local province. And, I mean, the passive ability of the Squiggly Beast is... Okay, cool, whatever. Uh, he also has the Bonewood Staff as well. Three unit, three things, right? Three special items, pretty cool. Uh, magical item drop chance, plus 5%. Miscast base, minus 20%. Gives him more melee attack, more magical resistance. Enables him to have magical attacks. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, magical attacks. That's something that you can get through a skill anyway. Uh, and also increases his post-battle loot by 10%. And you can basically trigger a pseudo version of frenzy map wide which is pretty cool anytime he cast so it, it is good that is pretty good giving the extra bonus to charge as well as melee attack is pretty sweet anytime he casts a spell so he has a mount spleen ripper we will at some stage stick him on it but it's not a priority um these other skills here tunnel boss and bellower whatever this is his real well both of these two really but this 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 line is pretty cool i i do love it. he's got one of the best um sort of his unique skills that go into this line here uh so he has real savage boys plus eight uh melee attack and charge bonus for all savage orc units which is just really good <laughs> uh then savage rider which is almost the same slightly less charge bonus uh actually no it's slightly different charge bonus this is 10 percent. this is actually just 12 uh, for Savage Orc Cavalry. Your Savage Orc Cavalry can get some immensely high charge bonuses. So, that's pretty good. His Fury of the Prophet, which is awesome, especially when fighting dwarves, because it enables magical attacks and strips any magical resistances they may have, which is pretty good. Uh, Wild Feet, for himself, gives him perfect vigor, more speed, and a massive bump to his melee defense, which is super good. Colossal War Paint. I mean, if it was just 5% physical resistance for his whole army, that would be cool, but it obviously gives extra 20% for trolls, giants, arachnoroks, and rogue idols. All pretty good. And one of the great skills uh, is the reduction of costs uh, for Winds of Magic for Foot of Gork and the upgraded version, because it's an expensive, it's an amazing spell, uh, but it's also a very expensive spell, and this makes it not so expensive, so it's pretty good. Uh, he has the... Um, I can't remember what it's called now, the uh, Mork, the Magic of Mork or whatever. He has that. Uh, we will be wanting to get Foot of Gork because it's just fucking super strong. Uh, obviously, it's pretty expensive as you can see the Winds of Magic like that, but once we get Titanic Beast, that lowers it down. Uh, we'll also want Here We Go because plus 40 melee attack for 38 seconds, which isn't any, which is a fairly long time. In a effect radius of 40 meters is really good, especially for a fighty army like we're going to be. Uh, it does take him quite a few points to sink into here to get Arcane Conduit, so we will get there eventually, I suppose, but we're not going to rush it because there's too many other good things to give. Uh, but we are certainly going to want to grab, here we go, Foot of Gork, possibly Power of the Wire as well to get through here, and obviously we'll have to click Gaze of Mork to get into that line. Um, we will also be getting the boys putting three points into here because I mean at the third level the arrow the missile strength isn't important but plus eight melee attack plus 12 weapon uh, strength for all orc infantry is really good we will also be getting the riders to give more speed and charge bonus to his melee cav good thing is as well is with um, Wurzag and just orcs in general actually is the veterancy bonus you, for Wurzag you kind of just need one point here so you're not sort of spending points across here because you just go hard lads 
8% ward save for all orc units, more armor and more melee defense, which is pretty sweet. And that also then lets you unlock Smash them Faster for, the, for those buffs as well. Um, early game, we will obviously go Root Marcher. I don't really know what the best way to go is, truth be told. There's three different ways that you can go with Wurzag, and it all kind of depends on how I feel. You could certainly go Root Marcher and then the standard Rush to Lightning Strike. Personally, I would go somewhere between sacking and raiding, so maybe two points, two points, and then jump up to lightning strike. Um, or you could go bang, inspiring presence, and the boys to make your infantry instantly pretty good. Or you go root master, gaze of mork, and then rush to get foot of gork, which is really good because obviously foot of gork's just a monstrous spell. Um, they're the sort of three paths that you could go. I, I, I don't really know. I, I honestly don't know. Normally I have a definitive, like, this is the best way. This is what I think you should definitely do. On this one, I think you can go any of those ways. I don't think you're wrong. We'll see. We shall see how we progress. Obviously, Root Marcher will be the first, but where we go, what we do. I have a feeling I'm going to go towards Lightning Strike, but I could easily go this way as well. Right, uh, we start off at war with pretty much everyone we know. So we know one, two, three, four, five factions, and we're at war with four of them. <laughs> the only one we're not at war with is Grimgore. Uh, this start can be a bit RNG intensive. It all very much depends on... that. There's just a lot of moving parts, so I wouldn't say that there's one... You go here, you go to A, to B, to C, to D, and then that's that. It can vary. Uh, but generally speaking, what we're going to do is take these two settlements, and that usually is enough to piece these guys out. We don't need Grunty Mingle, although you know, it would be bad to come down and get it, but we kind of need to get out of war with them because we're at war with these guys. These guys, not Barak Var, but they'll probably get confederated pretty soon by the cockroaches that are the dwarves. Um, so we've got plenty on our... We've, we've got a lot on our plate, so to speak. So we want to get out of this fight with the tea snatchers and get our province and then what we'll probably do is look to try and get some sort of sack city or maybe jump across here do a bit of raid i don't know as i said it is quite rng intensive there's a lot that can go wrong go right you know affect which way you want to go but ultimately we don't really want to be leaving our starting province until we have an army that consists of Savage Orc Biggins, four Boar Boys, and basically Wurzag, a giant, and this chap here. Once we've got that, then we can start to look to move further afield, but we're going to concentrate on our own province here, and then we'll see where things go. We'll move Wurzag up to here. I think this is definitely the opening play that you want to make. Move up to there. Recruit three of these chaps, and then next turn attack Bitterstone Mine. This army will move up to here, but it's not a particularly hard fight. Uh, over here, just to let you be able to move around a bit more, personally, I would build the big boss tent. Um, the reason why I say that is because it enables you to get an early big boss, which is quite handy because obviously you can see our vision is very very limited so to be able to see what's ahead of us is quite important we don't want to walk into any kind of not literal ambushes you know as in ambush battles but we don't want to move into an area and then get hit by someone in the fog of war so having the big boss is handy it also adds us uh, gives us some uh, public order or obedience as it's called for orcs so it means that we're not we, we can move a little bit around without having to worry about rushing back to uh, Ekrin to constantly put out rebellion fires. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Uh, research. Uh, normally, if you're not if you're playing with one of the other orcs, uh, orc faction leaders, personally, I would go go faster and go to Healy Mushrooms. That would be my opening play. But with Wurzag, I prefer to go go faster. Then go bigger, big and bullies, and down to here. So you get more melee attack for all your orc infantry, plus a bit of replenishment rate, which kind of negates a little bit of the loss of not getting it here. You do want to grab this, but that's personally my open. That's what I would go for. Go faster, go bigger, big and bullies, and heavy clubs. And then 
possibly straight into heavy metal if we've got the scrap and then hit he healy mushrooms. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to discuss right now, so let's hit end turn. That's an amazingly quick end uh, first turn for one of my opening <laughs> campaigns. Usually they're about half an hour long before we hit that end turn button for the first time, but 15 minutes, not bad. All right. We'll fight this manually. I'm going to try and take as few losses as possible. Have a little look see at our troops. Here's some piggies. Look at them. They do look pretty mean. Moving on to over here, here are our savage orcs. All nice and angry. Here are our savage orc arrow boys. Look incredibly similar, right? Just in, they've got a bow and arrow in their hand instead of. Uh, an axe. There's our giant. He looks a bit confused, doesn't he? Like, what's going on? I'm not really sure. There's Wurzag doing his little dance. And uh, I think that's it, right? We don't have any other unit types. So, let's get ready. Work out what we do with you in a sec. <laughs> Just slow you down, I don't want you rushing too far ahead. What a shame. them. Should be a good fight for us over there. This guy really keeps hitting us with that, doesn't he? All right, they've got their war, but it's not a big deal, because they are trash. We've hit our war, which is really, which is a really good one at 22% physical resistance. Pretty sweet. Drop a brain burster down over there. Right, we've uh, wrecked these guys up. Uh, you can fire on them. Broken them, they're all running. Just kind of need to try and catch these arrow boys. Which our piglies will do. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh. I wish these wolf riders would hurry up and get over here, but... the noise that they make, what can I say? <laughs> uh, we'll drop a sack and occupy. Because we want money. Money, money, money. Uh, I don't really care about that. Alright, cool. Right, so, Root Marcher it is. Uh, and over here, we want to. The Night Goblin Shaman is basically going to be like a battery for uh, Wurzag, because it takes Wurzag a long time to get to Arcane Conduit. He's going to double up as his Arcane Conduit. And he's got a couple of decent spells as well to use. Uh, Itchy Nuisance uh, being basically the main one. You kind of want to alternate between these two. Sneaky Stabbing, uh, which is here, gives you a buff to one unit uh, of melee attack and armor piercing, which is quite nice. But Itchy Nuisance is the way to go. Uh, and that's all you really need to do. Don't need to do anything else with him. Just keep dropping Itchy Nuisance. It's a pretty good debuff. Uh, 25 seconds. Anyone within 40 rate meters loses 20 melee attack and 30% of their weapon damage. And, as I said, he just acts as an arcane conjurer. Uh, so we shall try to uh, get there. Not as soon as possible, but we'll make our way that way. Alright, let's demolish that. We don't need that building. Uh, we can repair that, that's fine. And I'm going to stick the boss tent in. We're going to grab a couple more orcs. And hit end turn. Yeah. Next, we are going to move what? up to there. Because we can't reach. Uh, saying that my early army before I can get the real army that I want consists of five orc arrow boys what we've got here and the rest obviously these guys so I need does it matter do I really need one two more right now when I could just drop into oh. here and that's another cool thing actually you can enter raiding camp with like no movement left which is pretty sweet okay. so let's do that that makes a little bit more sense over here, we'll stick in idols to get some growth. There's an inordinately long uh, siren that was just going past my house, and now another car. What can you do? Uh, okay, go bigger. Next up, we attack the Dragonhorn Mines. We could just auto-resolve this. I don't really think there's any need to fight that one manually. Give it a good sacking. Okay, that's not awful. That's pretty decent. All right. Thank you. Drop in there. Now, that should be enough for us to... Paste them out. And we will do.
Oh shit, I'm offering them money. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, they're not going to accept that. But they accepted that. Alright, cool. So we're... Peace these guys out. Uh, I might as well stay in. Uh, now, do I go for lightning strike or do I make my schmucks better? I think I'm going to head towards lightning strike. Just feel safer with it. Oh, almost went for Gork or fix it. That's not what we want. Now we've got that. Let's stick another growth building in here. We can repair that. I has my mystic powers. Grab these lads. And over here, we can grab a big boss. Um that is quite nice to have just because we could stick him in a secondary army later on down the line but this guy generally is just going to be on the map so let's take this piece of crap guy the determined one who cares about that and he can go and scout out ahead because we are at war with these pricks We'll go up and smash them. Alright, military alliance. I suppose that's better than them actually being absorbed into their army, though. Let's take what should be ours. Alright, I think they own a settlement here as well, so. Their main stack isn't where you'd think it would be. I'll grab two more of these. And end turn, I think. Yep. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Fucking cockroaches. Okay, so they've got two armies over here. They are at war with the dwarves, though, so they need to sort of balance the frets out, if that makes sense. I'm going to make our way over here. Do a bit of raiding. Uh, I would love to get Grimgore involved against the dwarves really as soon as possible before he starts thinking that he should take on all the Skaven in the world everywhere. Right, so they've sprinted over. This guy, no, get lost. Alright, so he didn't really send over much. Uh, since we're probably about to sack that settlement, we might as well boost our sacking. Uh, we do want to get this up to level 3 as soon as possible, but I mean, if we don't use this point now, it's another 7 turns until we can get that, so it's not really worth the wait. Sometimes you can get, sometimes the gap between 1 growth and 2 growth is like only, if you've got like a if you've got a race that has a lot of growth going on, can be like just like a couple of turns, and then sometimes I think it's probably best to wait just to get level 3 main settlement first, but with that much turn time, it's probably better not to. Uh, we'll bump up the Bitter stone mines, shall we? Or the dragon dragon horn mines? I think the dragon horns, because it's less I say less likely, I mean anything can happen in this uh, on this intro. Uh, in the first sort of thirty turns, because it is quite depending on which way the wind blows, but we're I suppose less likely to do attack from down here, so probably I don't mind investing money in to this settlement. More likely this one will be attacked at some stage, so Obviously, money that goes into here will be lost if it gets blown up. Uh, 
Alright, this is going to be pretty straightforward. Especially considering the bulk of their units uh, are going to be tired as well. I think we can already start setting up what we're going to do. I'm presuming that crap I'll, I'll run from there. It's almost like we might catch them as well. going good. They've got their war, but I mean, truth be told, who really cares? We've got ours. Now our boar boys, you might be thinking, well, they're doing pretty shit. And yeah, they are doing shit right now, but they will get better. Trust me. after their lord since he seems to be just standing there let's hit up the tormentor sword so he's stuck in position and let the giant do whatever the hell that move is love a bit of rush army it's fucking fun As you might have noticed in the last couple of uh, playthroughs, like different campaigns that I've done, I have tried to generally go with armies, at least for the main lord, with armies that are more sort of infantry focused. Because, you know, obviously the meta is on, especially on legendary, is to you know, go more ranged focused. Which, you know, is fine. But I, I do think there is like a conception that it's impossible to win with infantry on legendary difficulty, and that's not true. It is more difficult, but it's not impossible. And with someone like Wurzag who buffs up in, like certain infantry really high, it's you can definitely do it. Um, I was going to say sack it and occupy, but it's not actually that much money, so I think I'm just going to occupy. Oh, we could confederate them. I didn't realise that was their main chap. The thing is, is it worth it? Is it actually worth it? I don't think it is. Because I would rather there be a buffer over here. This is my tribe. Shame they won't accept peace. Me. Why do they hate me so much? That's all we need. All right, but yeah, I, I mean. What was the point of me confederating them, right? Because I get Dor Karaz, I'm not at war with them, but I can't afford a second army, so this all gets this, you know, gets disbanded, and the dwarves just come and take that 
take that settlement anyway. So I'd rather keep them there and use them as a bit of an opportunity to do a bit of uh, a bit of farming. Alright, we'll get that big and bullies and then we'll get heavy clubs. And they're not the best um, comm commandments that you can put in. Recruitment cost and local recruitment capacity plus one. Mm. In, in extortion rate, I mean it's not very high anyway, so 5% of 380 is not a lot, as you can tell. Um, 20 growth and 2 obedience isn't bad, I suppose. It's the best one, generally speaking, so we'll stick that on. Now we are going to want to get to dock Karaz fairly sharpishly, because we don't want them to build it. Oh, okay, one of them ran off. That's pretty good. Hopefully to take a Dwarven settlement. That would be pretty sweet. Mr. Stabby, yep. I'd rather eat a squeak. Get that gig. Green profit. You're not right in the head. He can't reach if he sprints all the way back. Let's take what's we'll move up to out. here. <sighs> Annoyingly, what's going to happen is he's going to run back here. And I haven't got lightning strike yet. I might be able to take them all on. We'll see. Can you move a little bit more? Yeah. I just want to see if there's anyone in Barakvar, but it seems like there isn't. So that's pretty good. That's all we need. More boys to sell. That would be pretty nice if they joined against the border princes. I wonder if I can. I wonder if I offer them some money, they'll do it. Yeah, okay. That's good, because that'll keep the Border Princes a bit occupied, and it'll probably keep them from coming to fight us as well, so. Whoa. Now then, boys. Come say hello to I mean, it might also get them destroyed by the Border Princes, but again, I'm not that the, I, the Border Princes will focus on the player more than they will on the AI, but again, they can be a bit of a nuisance, so just having someone else for them to fight, Your other than just me, is pretty good. Uh, is there anyone else I can get in to just fight my enemies? Now, here, listen. This Nestler is ours. Who contends this is? No. <laughs> Speak up, or I'll take your tongue. Darkness. What? Darkness. Darkness. Disturb my great works. All right, screw you. Oh, that's pretty good. They didn't come back. Good. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, I'll probably go bit of stone mine at this stage. Again, kind of on the same principle that stone mine tower is a bit nearer to enemy territory and... I mean, you could say, well, you know, build it up quicker then, but, I mean, could be money sunk into something that's not going to help. Although, saying that, it might be better because it's somewhere to retreat and having a bit more people there might not be awful. All right, yeah, I've convinced myself I'll go for Stone Mine Tower. Great, Robert. I'm his principles. Let's fight him. Uh, this should be pretty straightforward as well. You'll see this battle of Dot Karaz a couple of times, I think, in the next few turns. Various different iterations of it. Egg. 
Uh, sorry, my hands are getting all slippery there. Couldn't enact what I wanted to. Now they might beat me to the top of this hill. Probably not, actually. They're not going the right way. Well, maybe they are, actually. I don't mind if we meet them on the top of the hill. I'd hate to have to fight them coming up the hill, though. Come on, you slow coaches. It's all good. It's all good so far. Kind of wish you were doing more to fight them. Let me drop on them. Alright, their lord is running. It's piling over here. You guys shoot up on their lord. Just because I don't want to commit other resources to chasing him around. Pushing this way. You guys fire on them. Their lord is coming back. We've got another war. That's that. pretty good. Get that fire crap out. You can have that. So that 15%, that means Wurzag is up to 40% physical resistance already. And that's not including his, which he gets from this. So that's 46. And and this, which will bring him up to 50%. And this, which will bring him to 55. <laughs> pretty awesome, right? And then what he gets from the war as well, like, pretty, pretty good. Alright. I suppose we'll stick that in. Now, do we want to stick in here and raid? So if we move over here. So we won't be healing quite as much as what I'd like, but... No! I guess it's better than nothing. Right? Uh, just in terms of scrap upgrades, um, the three that you can get over here, longer weapons, which gives plus 10 bonus to large. 
or liquor flasks, plus 15% leadership. You really want Idol of Gore. This is the same, I think, for the Biggins as well. Extra 30% missile resistance is really good for a unit that basically has no armor <laughs> or shields or anything like that. So that's what you want to do. If you do decide to run Arab Boys in your army, um, personally, I'd go combat skin stacks, but I don't run them in my army once I get it up to where I want, so I don't care. And for these guys, I think this is the same. Yeah, you want these uh, scrap saddles. Gives them 15% speed and more armor as well. I think that's definitely the way to go. Just in case you're wondering. Uh, let's... Yes, boss. Don't let's end turn. Um, Your prestige grows, my lord. Good, thank you. See, now that we're only four turns away from getting up to tier two, rather than what it was seven before when I could have upgraded this, um, I think I'm going to wait. And I am going to stick this in. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to stick this down here. It's a bit further away. Had that been Stone Mine Tower, I would have stuck the small fort because it's going to be somewhere I might retreat to, so having the extra garrison units would be handy. But yeah, I'm going to wait to go up to there because I want to get to here as soon as possible. Uh, since they've decided not to send anyone over here... No, oh, they've got this guy in here, but who cares about him? Shame that Wurzag didn't level up there, but hey ho. I suppose it is what it is. The Assault Stone. Okay. Well, there's worse things to get. Free Bound spell. Like it. Yeah, we're not upgrading that because, as I said, we're waiting to get Ekarund up. Is there anything we can do? You've come for Gringor's mercy. Yeah. Nope. I don't care about the top knots, they're a bit too far away. The great horned rat favors Mimi. Together we seek your lord demise. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe they will. Maybe they will join against the border princes. They're not against the idea, so that's quite interesting. Um, I'd rather you fight the Border Princes, because you're nearer to them. You might actually do something against them. Oh, no. If I give you some money as well... Uh, let me get rid of that. Cool. Good stuff. I just want to keep these guys off my back. Or at least give them some other stuff to think about. I'm not sure why Carrick here have decided to wander all the way over here. Well, that's a shame. Well, it's not a shame. But I certainly would have preferred to have kept sacking that. So Grimgore confederated two Two people that turn. Greedy bastard. Let's take what should be ours. What? Where's that gonna do it? Talk. Cause my job at Gitsnick was. Of course Grimgore hates us now for you know raiding. Oh well, I suppose he hates us for raiding. It's bullshit. That, that that needs to change. If they confederate someone whilst you're actually on their land, that should not be counted as trespassing. It just shouldn't. It's just it's just not trespassing. It's I was already there. What do you want me to do? I can't just vanish. I'm special. 
boy has seen the future. Could I rush Barak Var? No, I couldn't. Green prophet. I'd love to jump in over here. Right, let's, let's drop down into the. There we go, Grimgore. Yeah, de declare war on Clan Rictus Nest. On Rictus Clan Nest, rather. Don't care about that quest. Don't really want to be at war with them. So we'll grab heavy clubs. Help us out with our. Uh, with our. What do you call it? Refuse. Yes, you dare approach a lord of the Dowie. Come on, why don't you want to fight the border princes? They smell. No one likes them. What's you? We gonna shake hands? Come on, Grimgore. Not humans. Yeah. Grim Gore is an ass. Let's take what should be ours. On it. I will not obey. Where's that? The great green prophet. <laughs> Spell smooth. Little bit of a risk. Not gonna lie, a little bit of a risk. But I mean, I'm not worried about winning this fight. I'm more worried about if they've got someone off in the darkness, like a full stack with great swords or some shit like that. Um, that would be a bit worrisome. Like that I can't see. What you want? Why can't you see them, you stupid gobber? If we fight in a forest, it kind of helps me out because their archers are better than are better than um, the my archers, obviously. The war is here, bad boy. out on a few charges there but should be fine now I think we're absolutely wrecking them up right, you just chase them down you don't seem to be doing anything 
Get in there. Alright, their lords really got a bit pasting. Here comes our war. Let's get you into the forest. You don't seem to be fighting for some reason. Alright, I'll just drop on them. You'll reckon these guys up. They fled. You can run back in over here. Feel free to fire on their lord. Chase them down. Where are my piggies? Get out of there. Alright, sweet. Barely took any damage. Where's Agon is 100 kills? Not bad. Time. I mean, look, this is incredibly dangerous because... I mean, they could have an army very nearby. So it might have been a, a bit of a silly move. I guess time will tell. Forgrim thinks he can come fight me, does he? Why are you fucking attacking every single Skaven in the world when you've got some dwarves right here? I mean, Forgrim's army is not particularly that scary, but but I don't really want to fuck around. No good bearer would do this. The great Simon. No. I'm not going to sprint anywhere. I'm just going to stay there. Uh, let's go heavy metal as well, I think. I was going to sprint to healing mushrooms, but it's one turn that gives us more armor and more weapon strength. So let's just do that. Do it. I'm all right with that. Cork and more cork coming. What you want? Can it be quick? Absolutely okay. not. I mean, we slaughtered that army. Something rotten. What? Going. But I'm just going to pop home. For now. 
All right, we still want to get to boar painting, but we're not in a rush to get to boar painting because, well, we don't have really loads of boars yet. <laughs> so we're going to go for Healy Mushrooms next 10 turns. We also do want to get this as well, Gobbo Crackdown, which for some reason improves Orcs more than it improves Gobbos, but there you go. That's it, Grimgore's like a wall of everyone. Fever. Now, I'll ignore that. I have seen the future. Oh, bump that up. I has my mystic powers. Cool. Let's take what should be ours. Could jump up here. I refuse. Catch them in force march. I will not obey. All his powers. Let's smash them good. Yeah, I think this is fine. Almost the well, pretty much the exact same formation that we did last time. Right, I've got this other army coming from the side. No, they don't. They've got one hero coming from the side. That's okay. We just need to basically keep running at these crossbowmen to keep them from firing at us. that they didn't actually flee from me over there. That's fine. Just keep firing in on these guys. We've got our what? them. And that's fine over there. We're winning that fight. We need to kind of try and 
crush these guys together. Keep chasing these crossbows. Drop that in there. Now everyone over here is pretty much routing. follow these guys. Now these dudes are going to be a bit of a pain in the bum to catch, but I guess there's worse things in life. Got some spearmen who think they're, think they're double hard. Kind of don't want their lord let their lord get away. Alright, got him. Close victory, my bum bum. Nothing in the slightest close about that. Like this unit of savage orcs killed more people by themselves than I lost in in, the t in like in total. Spell smooth. Cool. Uh, also cool. Lightning strike away. Magical reserves. I as my mystic powers. What you want? Not sure where to go. Kind of feel like I can push on on these guys. Ooh. Maybe not. Probably need to drop back here now, because the dwarves are gonna push in. Oh, well, the problem is the reason why I went over here anyway it wasn't just to sack them, but because I didn't really have anything to do over there now that Grimgor had taken uh, had taken that settlement. Um, anyway, I think we're going to end this episode here. I've just realised what the time is. So, pretty good first first episode. We've managed to get uh, up to lightning strike. Next, we are going to definitely run to go and get foot of gork. And then we're going to buff our boys up here, and then we'll start to buff them down here. I think that's going to be the move. Um, we will also in about seven eight turns be able to start recruiting these guys which is pretty good but anyway as it's first episode please do hit a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and uh, we'll see you next time and we'll continue things till then take care bye bye